And we're live. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Parmer, and I am a co-founder of Plotly. And uh, more recently, I wrote and published a Python package called Dash, which I'm here to show you today. Um, in sunny Montreal in our Montreal headquarters in Quebec, Canada. Um, and today I'm just going to show you some of uh, Dash examples of, of apps that we've built for some of our customers, as well as just give you like a 15 to 20 minute introduction to the actual code behind Dash and run a few different examples and give you a taste of what it actually looks like to build um, a Dash application. So I'll, uh, I'll be answering all of your questions at the very end. Um, and, and for now, just uh, to hang tight and, um, and let's get started. Can everybody see my screen okay? Great. So Dash is a Python package. It's open source and it's licensed under the MIT license. So that means you're free to use it, install it, run it on your own servers, and run it on your laptop. Dash works entirely locally, so there's no data in the applications that you write that will get sent to Plotly servers. I'll be going over the open source free version of Dash today. But we have another version of Dash in a Dash hosting server that we build for enterprises that allow you to really easily deploy apps inside your company's firewall on your own company's servers and permission those apps with LDAP. So Dash is MIT licensed, but we're funding the development of Dash and other products that we make at Plotly that are open source through this sort of open source and enterprise um, combination. We want to make really great open source tools and share them with everybody. But if you're an enterprise and you're at a Fortune 5000 company and you have the budget to run Dash inside your enterprise, we're trying to also make some tools that make that as easy and seamless as possible. So to get started with Dash, we have a really extensive user guide. That's just at plot.ly slash dash. This is the best place to get started. Inside this user guide, there are some links to other talks that I've given about Dash, most recently this summer at SciPy um, in Austin, Texas, as well as last year at Plotly's own conference, PlotCon in New York City. We also have this link right on the first page, that's the Dash app gallery. And if you're wondering what you can build with Dash, this is a great place to get started. We're building new apps all the time for our own customers or um, just for the community. And all of these apps we're posting on this Dash app gallery. So I'll go through a few of these applications now just to show you what's possible. But if you want to refer to this later, check it out at plot.ly slash dash slash gallery. This first example is a Dash app that we recreated um, from a New York Times original. This New York Times graph shows the yield curve. And we're recreating in this application in Dash in just about 300 lines of code. So Dash apps are completely interactive. And the graphs in Dash are powered by Plotly.js which is our open source JavaScript graphing library. Plotly.js is what powers our Python libraries and our R libraries. You view the graphs in your web browser. And Plotly.js graphs are completely interactive. You render these graphs in either SVG, which is publication quality vector format, or in WebGL, which uses your GPU and makes these graphs really fast to interact with. For example, this really rich 3D surface plot. Dash apps aren't just about the graphs themselves. They also abstract away lots of other components in applications like text or buttons 
or sliders. And we'll get more into this as the demo goes along. This is another example of a Dash app that we built for one of our pharmaceutical customers. This Dash app is really interactive. As you hover over points, we're updating text on the left with more meta information about the points that we're hovering over. We also include a link to the molecules and an image to the molecules too. There's a radio item above the graph that allows you to switch different chart types. This is a 3D scatter plot. We were just looking at a 2D scatter plot before. Here's a 2D histogram, which shows the density of points, as well as a scatter plot that's plotted on top of it. When you're interacting with Plotly graphs, there are a few shortcuts that you should be aware of. First, if you click and drag on a plot, that allows you to zoom into regions. Now, if you hold down your shift key and you click and drag, this allows you to pan around the graphs. Double clicking resets the scale and allows you to auto scale. All of these interaction modes are available inside this toolbar. So if you forget how to do these mouse shortcuts, you can also click these buttons in the toolbar to do the same actions. There are a few other things in this toolbar that are pretty cool. There's this lasso select option, which allows you to select multiple points. And as you'll see later in parts of the Dash tutorial, you can tie this selection event to your own Python code and write these Python functions that respond to these selection events and update your UI with data from the selected regions. You can select kind of arbitrary polygons like this, or you can click this box select and select rectangular shapes. Above this graph is a drop-down element where you can select different molecules, and these will get highlighted inside the scatter plot below. And we also place them inside the table. The thing to note about these Dash applications is that all of the logic to update these output components, these graphs and these tables, even this text, is totally custom. So we're not making any assumptions about the data model inside your application. All that Dash does is it provides a Pythonic interface to the components of a Dash app. That means things like text, headers, images, dropdowns, graphs, radio items, and a really easy way for you to bind input components, things like these radio items, these dropdowns, to output components, which are things like these graphs and these tables. We just provide the interface between input and output components, as well as an interface to these components themselves. And then it's up to you to program the logic that binds everything together. That makes Dash an extremely flexible tool. This is an application that's used for drug discovery. And the data is coming from a CSV and parsed with pandas. But in other applications, I might be running my own models or doing simulations or querying data from databases. You can write your own Python code that can do any arbitrary logic Dash just provides a really nice web interface to sit in front of your own analytical Python code. This is another example that we prototyped for one of our financial customers that shows volatility surfaces in other metrics. This dropdown is dynamically updated from a SQL database. As I select different values, it updates the graph this surface plot, as well as these contour plots below and these box plots. In this example, we're running a model and this model has a bunch of different parameters. The cool thing about Dash is that you can put a user interface in front of the models that you write. So if you have all these different parameters, you can put these parameters inside a user interface that allows you to select one parameter versus the other, or in the case of checkboxes, multiple parameters. Allows you to slide sliders to update those parameters as well. 
And the results that you write can update one graph, or in this case, they can update several graphs. They could also update text on the page or tables. This is another prototype of uh, an application that we wrote for one of our oil and gas customers. And this looks more like a typical dashboard that you might see. So a lot of people, when they learn about Dash, they think that Dash is just for dashboards. As we've seen in the previous example, these aren't, don't always look like a typical sort of business intelligence dashboard. They're more like applications. But you can use Dash to create apps like this that look very much like a traditional dashboard. They have graphs that are arranged in a grid like this, and there's some top level controls that update all of the graphs below. With this application, there's also some cross filtering logic that was written in Python and listens to Dash's event system. So when I hover over points in this map on the left, this line chart on the right is updated dynamically based off of whichever point that I'm hovering on. So you can see Dash is pretty fast. As I'm hovering over these points, it's making an API call to my Dash app that's running on the Dash deployment server. And this point, the data about the point that I'm hovering on gets sent to the server the server runs some data analytics code in Python, like filtering uh, Pandas data frame to get the row based off of the point that I'm hovering on. And then it returns a new figure object that updates this graph on the right. So there's this round trip that's happening every time I hover, but you can see it's pretty fast. So I'm hovering over each of these points, it's updating all the other graphs inside my dashboard. Another cool thing about Dash is that it's inherently multi-user capable. So I'm viewing this Dash app, and this is a publicly available Dash app. You could visit this yourself by going through the gallery and finding it. And multiple people can view this application at once, and each of them will have an independent session. If I'm viewing this and updating these graphs on the right by hovering over these points, this type of interaction is independent of any other interactions that any other users are having. So there's no like global state inside the Dash backend. Dash scales to multiple users very easily because all of the state inside the Dash app, and by state, I mean the variables that are changing that are unique to the user session, like which point I'm hovering over or which drop downs I have selected. All of that state is actually stored inside the web browser in JavaScript, and it's unique to this session that I have open. So that's kind of different than what you might be used to if you say run like an IPython notebook with some widgets where you are updating data inside your Python kernel and, and there's a lot of mutation that's happening um, on the back end. With Dash, we've designed it so the back end is stateless, all the state is stored in the front end in the application. So you are able to build web applications that are inherently multi-user capable. There are some other selections that happen here, like as I select different bars inside this bar chart, it's updating other graphs based off of the region that I have selected on. This application has a lot to it. There's, there's five different apps and there's about six controls. And, Altogether, this application was written in, I think, around 400 lines of code. This code is also open source on GitHub, so you can check it out if you want. And this is a very similar example. We have a, a map with hover points showing all of the Uber rides in New York City for one year. And as I select different regions, inside the histogram below my app, my maps update. So that should give you an idea sort of, of what's capable in Dash. These applications are all fairly complete. There's styling and they look really nice. And, but altogether, they're written in, in maybe around 500 lines of code or less for each of these apps. And the cool thing was that each of the apps were written entirely in Python. There was no JavaScript that was required to write these apps. 
And that's the really cool thing about Dash is that you can use the same language for doing data analysis that you can for building apps. And so what that means is that you don't have, if you're working at a company, you don't have to um, take your data analysis code and send it to your front end app development team or designers. You know, building an application like this would usually take a whole team of people to create front end developers, back end developers, designers. There's a lot of work to build an application. You have to do the JavaScript and then manage the API requests over HTTP. And you have to manage all the logic in the front end about how does one element update another element? And what if there's a series of elements that relate off of each other? You could update one dropdown, which updates another dropdown, which updates another dropdown, which finally updates 10 graphs. There's a lot of logic that's required in this. And Dash aims to extract all of this away and provide a Pythonic interface to web application development. So again, if you want to check out these examples, go to plot.ly slash dash, which is the Dash user guide. And when you get here, check out the Dash app gallery. The second half of this webinar, I'm just going to dig into some code. I'm going to start out with some really simple examples. And we're going to slowly build them up until we have an interactive application. If you want to do this on your own, I really recommend checking out the Dash tutorial, which is also as part of this user guide. This is at plot.ly slash dash in your browser. There are six parts to the Dash tutorial, and it's really comprehensive. Everything that I talk about today in the webinar is covered inside this tutorial, and even more so. This tutorial is really good. Um, and I'm sort of constantly improving it. Um, for each of the examples inside this tutorial, you get the full code that's required to create the example, as well as a lot of commentary about different parts of the code example. So it takes a couple of hours to get through, but it's worth it. I think you know, it's, it's pretty comprehensive and exhaustive. The other thing to check out is the Dash community forum. This is an extremely active forum of Dash users. And every couple of days, I come in here and answer people's questions personally. So just today, we've had about 15 questions that have been asked on the Dash community forum. And this is just a really, really good source of information. And finally, if you want private support for your companies or your enterprises, we have an advanced development team that can work with your teams directly. Um, and that's part of our paid offerings for commercial enterprises. And send a link to that, those options at the end of this webinar. So to get started, I'll open up my code editor and just go through a couple of examples. I'll try to make the text really big so that everybody can see. How does this look? Great. So there are two parts to a Dash application. The first part of the Dash application describes what the application looks like. This includes the things like the text, the graphs, the tables, all the style that goes with those texts and tables. And then the second part of the Dash application describes the interactivity. So to start, I'll just show you what the Dash layout looks like, which describes the Dash application. This code on the right, which I'll go over, ends up creating this application on the left. So this application has three components. There's this header, there's this text, and then there's this graph. In the Dash code itself, here are where those three components are. It's this HTML header. So you can see HTML is the name of the component class. And H3 creates an HTML H3 element, which is like a header three element, which means that it's, um, you know, a header one element is the largest header, header two is the second largest, header three is the third largest header. So 
if I change this to H1 instead, if I change this text to be hello-webinar, and then I refresh my application, this will update with a new header one element in this new text. So the children attribute, I might have to restart my application. The children attribute describes what the um, content of the attribute is. So in this case, hello dash matches this text here. There are different attributes that describe what each of these components looks like. And one of them is the style attribute. And this ends up getting mapped to HTML styles. So if I wanna change the color of this text, there's this color style. If I wanna do something like change the alignment of this text, I could do something like text align center. All of these are standard CSS attributes and they're all accessible in Dash. All of the HTML components or attributes that are available are accessible in Dash. So that's H1s, divs, images, iframes, lists, tables. They're all available in this Dash HTML components library. So anything that you could build with HTML, you could build with Dash. But the difference is that with Dash, you're able to write your markup in Python. And as we'll see later, that makes it really easy to make our markup data driven. It makes it really easy to transfer our pandas data frame into an HTML table. The other component library besides the HTML components that are available in Dash is the Dash core components library. And these are components that are a little bit more complex. They involve JavaScript, CSS, and they're highly dynamic. So some of these components include things like dropdowns and graphs and tables. These components under the hood are written in a JavaScript graphing library that's called react.js. And I'll just open up the documentation to show you where a full list of these components are available. If you go to plot.ly slash dash slash dash hyphen core hyphen components, you can see a full list of the available dash core components. So these include things like dropdowns. Dropdowns can have one value or multiple values. Sliders. Sliders with labels. Range sliders that have two two ends that can be used for things like time series, basic inputs for entering text, text areas for multiple lines of text, check boxes, radio items, buttons, date pickers, You can write markdown directly in Dash. Interactive tables that have things like row selection, filtering, sorting, all available directly in Python. A component for uploading data so that you can drag and drop CSV files or images and make the uploaded values accessible in your Python context so that you can do some data processing or just display them in your application. Tabs for organizing your components in your layouts. And then finally, graphs, which is powered by Plotly.js, our open source interactive JavaScript graphing library which is the same library that's used in our Python graphing library. So these are all the available components in this Dash core components library. So in this case, I'll use the graph component. And one of the attributes of the graph component is this figure. And this figure is a declarative description of what this graph looks like. 
in this graph, I'm going to have a single bar chart that has this X data and this Y data. And the color of the bar is going to be this RGB value. So dash graphs as well as dash components are described completely declaratively. And what that means is that they are a set of keyword attributes like this figure equals and this bar and X equals and marker equals. And in the case of HTML elements, children equals. And all of these attributes completely describe what a Dash application looks like. So there are no like methods that you end up using on these components. You simply create them with a list of all of their attributes. So that makes the API of Dash really easy to understand because all you have to do is learn what the different attributes are of each of these components. And of course, these are documented if you call help in your Python terminal in one of these components. Or if you go to the Dash component library itself and you click through one of these reference pages, at the bottom of these reference pages, you'll see all of the available components, attributes that are available, properties for each of um, these Dash core components. So this example, we were, you know, we were hard coding our data. We just had X, one, two, three, and four, one, two, but you can imagine how you might make this application a little bit more data driven. So in this next example, I'm going to pull data from pandas using this library called pandas data reader. And this will pull data from sources like Yahoo Finance or Google Finance. And I'm just going to pull a ticker that's hard coded. I'm going to pull the Coke ticker from January 1st until now. And so this example is really similar to our previous example where we have a header and we have a graph. In this case, we're using the H1 element. We have this title stock tickers, which matches this title. But instead of hard coding our X and Y data, we're going to pull it dynamically from this data frame. So we've got DF of index showing the dates and then the open price. So these, this is just two components on this page. But if I want to add another component to my application, I can just list it below. So I've got this commented out, you know, uncommented. And this is the dash table experiments, the, the dash interactive table component. So this will add a third component to my application, the dash data table. So now I have a header, a graph, and an interactive table inside my application. So here's this line chart time series. And now I have this interactive application, which has this interactive table below showing all of the different columns of my data frame. So, you know, in just a couple of lines of code, I added another component to this application and I'm displaying all of the data in my data frame inside this interactive table. And with this table, I'm able to sort the rows and the columns. I could even edit different attributes inside this table. And later we'll see how we could bind changes like this of changing cells inside my table to then update other parts of the graph. This table is really interactive. You can sort, you can also do things like filtering. And this table itself behind the scenes is written in react.js from co components that are available in the really rich community of react.js. So we'll just take this a step further and show you how you can customize the look and feel of these applications. I am doing something very similar in this next example. Where I'm gonna customize the style of my application, all the colors, the fonts. And I'm still pulling data from a data frame. So I'll scroll to the top and you can see that I'm just reading a file, a CSV file that's available inside this folder. 
This top level HTML.div is a container that contains all of the other components in my application. And if I apply style to this top level container, it ends up getting applied to the rest of the components inside my layout. This is just sort of standard HTML and CSS. In Dash, this will end up getting rendered as an HTML div element with inline styles. So I'll change the background color to, to this sort of dark gray, and I'll change the font color to white. And this updates this color and all the fonts inside my table. And then inside the graph itself, every component, every attribute of the Plotly graphs are customizable. So you can change the colors, the ticks, the labels, you can change the chart types. And this is all available inside this dcc.graph interface. So like the last example, I'm pulling X data and Y data from the data frame. I'm also adding text here, which will show text as I hover. In this case, I'm looking at GDP of countries versus life expectancy of the countries. Each point represents a country. And as I hover over values, I can see which country I'm hovering over. And in this case, I'm going to modify the style of this a little bit away from the defaults. So I'll make the points have a little bit of opacity. So there's this opacity argument. I'll make them a little bit bigger with size eight, and I'll add a white borderline around them. And I'll modify the background color of the chart, modify the margins, and I'll make the y-axis logarithmic. So all this is to say that when you look at a Plotly chart and you want to customize something, you know, every aspect of a Plotly chart is customizable. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of properties that describe a Plotly chart and you can modify each one of them. If you just want to see what properties are available and you just want to customize your chart a little bit, there's this button inside a Plotly chart which says save and edit plot in cloud. And if you click on this, this will load up the chart inside Plotly's Chart Studio, which is an interactive application for modifying Plotly charts. So this is Plotly's Chart Studio, and it has a spreadsheet in here where you can add data or upload data. And it's an interactive graphing tool that's totally point and click. So if I want to change the scatter plot to a histogram, I can click on histogram here and change that. But the really cool thing about this chart editor is that all of the available attributes that you, we were just looking at are available inside this WYSIWYG editor. So if I want to change the colors and see how that looks, I can select different colors from this um, color picker. I can change the border width around the markers and see how that looks. I can kind of do all of the design of my graphs inside this editor. This allows me to see what's possible and how I can make a really nice looking chart without doing it all inside code. I can do things like add annotations, upload images, add different shapes or lines, explore different chart types. And once I've got the chart looking just how I want it, you'll see that there's this JSON panel inside the chart editor. And inside this, inside this JSON panel, we can see all of the different attributes that describe a Plotly chart. So there's the layout, there's the font, there's the margins. We modified the colors. So if I go down here and I open up marker, I can see this new color value that we updated. So using this JSON editor in Chart Studio, you can design your charts inside this interactive WYSIWYG editor, get them looking just how you want it, and then you can see what attributes your changes made or edited, and you can copy those attributes 
back into your Python code. And then you have a chart that you designed interactive, interactively, but is now um, updated programmatically. So here, if we're looking at plot background color in our code, we can see how this description of this chart is accessible inside this JSON panel inside the layout under here, plot background color. So this is just another tool that's available to you for designing Dash applications and making your graphs look really good. So this kind of covers what Dash apps look like. And the next example is to describe how you make these Dash apps interactive. So this application is really simple. We have two elements. We've got this drop-down component, and we've got this HTML div component. And what we want to do is when we update values from this drop-down, when we select a different entry, we want to update this text below. You could see how this type of example could get more complex. Like instead of updating text, you could update a graph or you could update another drop down, which would then update a table. But we'll just start with something really simple here where we select different values in the drop down and we update this text element below. So we've gone over what the layout looks like of a Dash application. This layout just has two different elements. There's this HTML.div, it has this drop down, and then there's another HTML.div which is just a generic HTML container which can contain text below. So what we want to do is when this value property of the dropdown changes, value represents which element we have selected in this dropdown. When this changes, we want to update the children property of this div below. To do this, there's a concept in Dash called Dash callbacks. This is a decorator which will wrap a function. And inside this decorator, you pass in output components and input components. Output has two arguments. The component ID, which is the ID that you assign inside your app layout. So you can see how the output here is output element. You know, this could be anything could be my output element or this is output element. And this matches this ID here. And then the second argument is the component property, which describes which property of these components we want to update. So if you remember previously, these components in our UIs are described completely declaratively through a set of properties. In case of dropdown, we've got an ID, which isn't something that you see. We have the options, which describe the available options inside this dropdown. And we have the value, which describes the currently selected value of the options. For this HTML div, we have children, which describes the text or other components inside this div. We could have other things like style, as we saw previously, where we changed the color of the text to white. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to update the children property of our div whenever the value property of the dropdown changes. And we describe this relationship between the components completely declaratively inside this callback decorator this function decorator that's called app.callback. So here we can see output, which is our output element in the children property of that output element. And we see this input, which is the dropdown element and the value of this dropdown element. Then the function that we're decorating will get as an input argument completely automatically. Dash will pass this in for you on its own it will get the value of the input that you supply. In this case, we just have one input and we're getting the value property of that input. 
And so that's going to get passed in to this function, this dropdown value. And with this function, we can do whatever we want in here. We could run some data analytics. We could query a database. We could run a simulation. In this case, we're going to do something really simple where we're just going to make a string that says which value we have selected. The only contract that Dash provides you is that the return value of these callbacks will end up getting, will end up updating whichever output property you have selected. So in this case, we have this drop down value and we're going to return a new string. And Dash is going to automatically update the children property of our div whenever this function gets called. So when I click on Montreal here, Dash is calling my function automatically because I've described this relationship between this input value of this dropdown. And then Dash will run this function with the new value that I've selected. And whatever is returned from this function, Dash will um, assign to this property inside this application. So as I select different values in this dropdown, it updates this text really straightforward and simple. But you could see how you could create something like this and make it a little bit more data driven. This example is really similar to the previous one, except that in this example, we are going to read from a pandas data frame. We have different values inside this data frame, which are dynamically updated and available from our pandas data frame. So this displays all of the different countries inside unique values inside our data frame. And instead of just displaying the value as text, we're going to do some filtering of our pandas data frame inside our callback and return a string that shows the results of this computation. So as I select different values, it will update the text in our header. We'll make this a little bit more complicated where we will, instead of just updating text, we're gonna update a graph. So in this case, instead of a dropdown, we have a slider. And as I select different values in the slider, it will update this graph here. So I'll just give you a second to look at this code. You can see the layout, and then you can look at the callback. So in this case, we have a graph, which is here, which is very similar to the graphs that we created before, except that we don't have a figure attribute inside here. Our figure is going to be dynamically created from the callbacks that we have here. So our callback is going to update the figure property of this graph, and the input is going to be our slider. And whenever the input changes, our graph is going to update. This callback here is based off of a pandas data frame. We're pulling in the data, we're filtering it based off of the year that we have selected. And then we're creating a simple plotly chart that has X data and Y data with some customized style. And that gets updated in our chart here. With these same principles, instead of having just one input component, like one slider that updates a graph, we can have multiple sliders or multiple dropdowns or elements that then update a graph. In this case, our markup is a little bit more complicated. We have two dropdowns and two radio items in a slider. And it's all updating this chart. Whenever any of these input properties components change, our graph gets updated. And that happens automatically through these callbacks that we have set up, where we say, whenever any of the input components change, the dropdowns, the sliders, the radio items, Whenever any of them change, call this function and pass in the new value of the input 
as well as the existing value of the rest of the components. So we get all of these different uh, values from our inputs inside this function automatically. We don't have to worry about the logic about when one component changes, make sure that you grab the values of the rest of the component. That's handled for you automatically. With Dash, you just get as an input argument the current state of the application. And this callback is called for you whenever the current state changes. And you get all of the values of the attributes that you have. So this example and more examples are inside the Plotly Dash user guide. It takes a couple of hours to get through, but it's worth it. Um, there's six different tutorials that start with sort of a very similar flow of, of what I had today, where we'll start with just the layout, we'll get into interactivity. And there's a few other chapters that I didn't cover today that are included in the user guide. Today, I basically just went over part two and part three of the Dash user guide, as well as the gallery. So again, Dash is a open source product. You are free to install this application um, on your own servers um, or on your own laptops. If you need help getting going with Dash at your company, help deploying these apps, if you wanna try out our Dash deployment server, if you want to do on-site Dash training or just be able to call us or email us whenever you run into problems, get in touch with our sales team at Rob at Plot.ly. We're helping a lot of people right now move their analytics and reporting stacks over to Python and other open source tools that are far more flexible, fast, and fun to work with, more fun to work with than anything else that's been out there. So that was a whirlwind uh, overview of Dash. Um, took about 50 minutes. We have uh, a few minutes for questions. Um, and otherwise you can get in touch with us directly or I'll see you on the community forum. Let me just pull up the questions here. So one of the questions was, does this blend with frameworks like Django or et cetera? So Dash is backend is built off of Flask. So you can have your, you can pass in your own Flask instance to Dash. So if you want to have pages with multiple URLs, and you already have those URLs described as part of your Flask app, and those pages aren't necessarily Dash apps, then um, you can pass in your own Flask instance that has that stuff described already. For Django, the integration isn't as tight right now. You have to run a Dash Flask server separately in a separate Python process and embed that Dash app as an iframe inside your Django web server. This may change in the future. We're looking for people to help sponsor an effort where we would have a Dash, a Django backend for Dash, or make it even more flexible so that you can embed Dash in other web frameworks. The second question is custom attributes to an HTML tag for things like Bootstrap. So um, Bootstrap has things like uh, uses things like data and ARIA tags. Um, that isn't available in Dash right now, but it will be soon. There's a PR pull request that's open for it. Um, there's a few things that we need to change in the framework to make that accessible, um, but it is will be possible um, within the next few months. The other thing that I should mention about Dash and the components that we use is that it's very easy for you to write your own Dash components in React.js. So if you want to port all the Bootstrap components to Dash, um, and you can use the Bootstrap React, Bootstrap React components that are available, and then the sort of 
React to Dash tool chain that we use for creating Dash components and making those React components accessible in the Python context is open source so that the community can make and maintain their own React components and make those accessible to everybody else inside the Dash context. This is another chapter in the user guide. It's at plot.ly slash dash slash plugins. Um, the third question is if there is a way to set up a multi-page application without having the issues of callbacks loaded before the layout. There is, and I'll refer you to a chapter in the user guide at plot.ly slash dash slash URLs, which has a few different examples of how these URLs work. Um, you have to define all the callbacks that might be contained on the different pages up front. Um, and so you have to predefine these callbacks, um, but this is possible. The, the Dash user guide itself is a Dash application. So as you're navigating the Dash user guide, keep that in mind. Anything that you see that's possible on the Dash user guide website with all these interactive examples, URL support, all that is, um, is available in Dash because it's, it's written in Dash itself. Um, another question is whether there's a way to load static images or logos in a Dash application. There is, this isn't um, documented in the user guide right now, but there are some questions in the community forum about this. Um, so if you search images inside the community forum, I have a couple of solutions that are available there for people. Another question is about Dash and CSS. So you can see, um, going back to images, there are um, a few different questions that are very similar to this that, um, that I've answered and have some solutions and we'll get updated as things get changing, like adding local images. Um, another question is about using Dash on an existing HTML and CSS template. So right now, Dash requires sort of a standalone, it creates a standalone HTML page. Um, so if you want to embed a Dash app inside an existing HTML page, you need to use an iframe right now. However, since Dash generates HTML for the HTML components, um, not for the core components, it, um, which are a higher level, um, you can use existing CSS that you have for other applications and add that CSS to your Dash applications to style them um, however you want. Dash itself doesn't come with CSS included, um, but there are a few different CSS style sheets that we have created that are available for you to use. We didn't include CSS by default, so as, so as to encourage the community um, to create their own CSS and make applications that, um, that look really unique. This is the Dash CSS style guide that, um, that I've written and that, that you can use and that we use in the side of Dash um, docs and all of those examples. Um, and another question is about integrating Plotly charts. This will be the last question, so we'll end at three o'clock sharp. Um, and so Plotly charts have the sort of the same syntax as the Dash core components. If you have a Plotly chart that is in, uh, available inside your, um, uh, is hosted on your Plotly, um, account on plot.ly that you've created using the API, you can embed that chart inside your Dash applications using an iframe, or you can even download the JSON representation of that chart and then use that same JSON representation um, inside your Dash applications. So this is my public Plotly profile that has um, 
different charts that I've created and dashboards that I've created and hosted and made public. And I could embed these inside Tash apps as well. Or I can generate them dynamically um, using just the Dash app code itself. Um, So again, feel free to reach out, check out the Dash user guide. I bought the Dash, there's contact info there. You can also reach our solutions team at rob at plot.ly directly if you want some help getting going with Dash at your company. And finally, if you want to learn more about Dash, we have a two-day intensive Dash workshop in New York City, which is part of our PlotCon series. There are still seats available, but it's filling up really quick. We've got a really great group of people that have signed up already from all over the world. Um, it's going to be two days of Dash, very similar to this, a little bit slower pace, more intensive, um, and we'll get into some of the more advanced chapters. So if you go to plotcon, P-L-O-T-C-O-N dot plot dot L-Y, you'll learn more about these workshops and uh, you can work with us directly for a couple of days to help you get started. So thank you everybody so much for your time. Um, and I hope to see you online or uh, in New York City this fall.